Hello and welcome to my channel, I'm Mrs. Coffee Time. On this video, I wanted to do a little story time. And if you saw the thumbnail, Whales and Cape Verdeans, you probably asked, what is she talking about? Well, I'm glad you're here because I think you will find this video very interesting. But first, if you are new here, I would really appreciate your support in subscribing to my channel and help me reach my goal to a thousand subscribers. Also, give me a like and comment on the video below because I love to interact with you on here. Hope you, you guys enjoy this video. Let's get into it. So before we get started, I wanted to share with you quickly why I decided to do this video. So one day, basically, I had this thought and I was wondering when the first Cape Verdean came to America. And that, friends, is what led to this video. Hope you enjoy it. And as always, I thank you very much for your support on this channel. Okay, so first I'm just going to explain what the whaling industry was. So in the 17th and 18th century, whaling was a popular and lucrative industry around the world. Seafaring nations were all in pursuit of this giant sea mammal that were limitless in the oceans. The United States grew to become the preeminent whaling nation in the world by the 1830s. The industry peaked in 1846 to 1852, particularly in the East Coast, Massachusetts area like Cape Cod and New Bedford. Whaling produced valuable resources such as oil, bone, meat, blubber, and baleen. These products were lucrative and inspired people on several continents to hunt whales near their own shores. The whaling industry contributed about $10 million to the economy at that time, equivalent to today's money, which would be about $399 million. So the sperm whales were primarily the ones that were hunted. Um, and just to give you an idea of how big these mammals were, um, the adult male sperms would be about one ton, and that is about 2,000 pounds. And the male ones would be about 32 to 42 tons, and that's about 64 to 84,000 pounds, which that's crazy. And the height, they would be the length would be about 49 to 59 feet long um so yeah these were big big uh, mammals Okay, so we're going to talk about really quick about some of the whaling products, which I thought this was pretty cool. Um, so the whale has um, blubber on it. And what this is, is pretty much it's a thick layer of skin that covers the whale and it helps them control their body temperature while they're in the water. While the air, the blubber, excuse me, the blubber provided um, would make was used to make oil. And this was before the time that, you know, there was electricity. So um they would use oil filled lamps um to light up their homes and this was in high demand um so the whales provided uh best oil and they also made candle wax um, to light up the homes so um they also used the whale oil to lubricate uh machinery The spermaceta, um, that one is found inside of the sperm whale head and basically it was a white waxy substance and this was used to make wax candles. The next product that was uh, used from the whales is the baleen. Um, basically these were plates that were found inside the whale's jaw and the baleen uh, was very strong and flexible. Um, so they use it to make, uh, to stiffen corsets, to make uh, collars. They used it to make um, hooped frame for skirts and also used them to make umbrellas. Um, it was also known as the whalebone. In 
And um, finally, the ambergris. Uh, this was a substance that was produced in the intestines of sperm whales. Um, and it was extracted to use in fine perfumes to help keep the scent from changing. Um, so it also was used in wine as um, aphrodisiacs. So that's very interesting itself. Okay guys, so that's it for the products. And I just wanna take a quick minute just to remind you guys to subscribe to my channel if you are new here. Um, if you are liking the content, please give me that like. Uh, also leave me a comment and let me know if you are enjoying this content. Okay, so now we're gonna get into how Cape Verdeans first immigrated to America. Cape Verde primary location in the Atlantic Ocean placed the islands in the direct path of whaling vessels leaving the USA. American whalers from New Bedford visited the islands beginning as early as the 1700s and began more regular trade in the early 19th century. As American whalers and traders visited the islands as a stop for trading foodstuffs, water, and salt, the islanders themselves also often joined the passing vessels. Cape Verdean men sometimes joined the vessels as crew, often sought out by the whaling shipmasters. The island men left their homeland in search of opportunities, and during that time, Cape Verde had been plagued by disease, active volcanoes, famine, and military force. Opportunity presented itself to New England and boarded the convenient ve vehicle of the passing whaler. As you can imagine, whaling was very dangerous and these Cape Verdean men were very courageous and fearless. To catch the whales, it was primarily, primarily done by hand-thrown harpoons from double-ended boats carrying five to seven men. The boats measured about seven to nine meters long. Harpooners and the boat steerers were the key men when the strike was made to capture the whales. In the mid 20th century, the whaling industry began to die down as the manufacturing industry began to evolve. As a result, the vessel ships used for whaling were used a lot less. However, as the 20th century went on and the ties between the islands and the ports got stronger, the entrepreneurial minded Cape Verdean men joined together and purchased these old vessels. Their idea was to manage them as packet ships, which were used to transport passengers and the freight to and from the Cape Verde Islands. During the time of packet ships, the women also began to come over to America to join their husbands and families. Tickets were sold for voyages on the packet ships, and they would leave from New Bedford to the final destination at the ports of Mindelo in San Vicente and Furna in Barf, Brava. The Cape Verdean men and women leaving the islands would pack water, food, supplies, and any personal belongings they wanted to take with them onto the ships and headed to America. These vo voyages across the Atlantic Ocean could take anywhere from two weeks to 45 days. If you can imagine traveling on the ocean that long, I think it is just absolutely incredible. These men and women made a sacrifice to leave for the unknown, full of hope, fear, and excitement for what the future held for them. Once they reached the American harbors, the majority of the first Cape Verdeans settled in New England, particularly in Massachusetts, New Bedford, and the Cape Cod. They created their own community and looked after one another. It is said, that some of the Cape Verdeans enlisted in the military and fought in some of the American wars. But that will have to be for another video at a later time. 
So we have reached the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed learning how the first Cape Verdeans came to America. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Leave me a like and a comment below. Until next time, friends. Bye.